What's up, everybody? Mr. Forrest back with another episode of Know Your Bible, Know Your God. Some of you are wondering, Mr. Forrest, why are you dressed like that? Well, actually, um, oh, right after the preaching, I have to go save Metropolis. Just kidding. Tonight is wear a fun costume night at Calvary Kids. So we're all wearing fun costumes and I thought I would dress up as Clark Kent so that no one will know that I'm actually Peter Parker. <coughs> Guys, don't forget to say your weekly verse and to do your weekly extra extra to learn your books of the Bible. Follow along with us. All that stuff is down in the description below. If you complete that work and you can say that to your parents without looking, then have your parents email me. I'll give you my email address at the end of the video. Have them email me and let me know you're following along. And then if you complete six weeks work, worth of work, I'm going to send you a prize. Let's jump right into it. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let's break that verse down. Let's start with in the beginning. The first three words in the entire Bible. In my office, I have an hourglass and that hourglass has blue sand. And I'm amazed that this glass piece filled with blue sand can keep time as well as it does. It measures an hour just by the sand dripping through the skinny or the thin part of the hourglass. Sometimes I'll turn the hourglass upside down so that I give myself an hour to complete a task. That way I'll work as efficiently as possible. I like playing the game Boggle. Boggle is a word game where there's all these little cubes about the size of dice that you put in this thing and I'll put a lid on and you shake it up. And then you take the lid off and you have a little minute timer. It's like an hourglass, but instead of measuring 60 minutes, it measures 60 seconds, just one minute. And you have one minute to make as many words as you can. And you write down the words from the letters that are facing up from those little dice. It's a super fun game. And I look at that little plastic uh, minute glass and I'm amazed that just by sand falling through the neck of the glass, it can keep time right at 60 seconds. But there's something you have to know. The hourglass in my office does not create time. It's not like if I was in my office and one day I accidentally swung my arm and dropped the hourglass and it shattered and all the sand went anywhere. It's not like time would stop. Not like I'd be like, no. and then time would stop. That's not how it works. It simply measures time or the clock in the back of the kids ministry center at Calvary. It's not like if the batteries run out and the batteries run out quite regularly. It's not like time stops. Like I'm in the middle of preaching and I'm like, and then God says, that's not how time works. A clock simply measures time. It does not create time. The same with a watch, a phone, Big Ben, a Fitbit, a sundial, an hourglass. These are means of measuring time, but they do not create time. Time is one of those mysterious concepts that I don't really understand. I do know this every year we get older. Every night I go to bed and I wake up and it's the next day. Now, when I was in high school, there was a TV show that I used to like to watch called Saved by the Bell. In Saved by the Bell, there was a main character. His name was Zach Morris. And if he ever got into trouble, he could always go time out and everything would stop. Like time would stop and everyone would be like, except for Zach. Zach could stay moving and he'd talk to the camera. He'd say, 
how did I get myself in this predicament and how am I going to get out of it? He'd go, time in and then time would start again. One of my favorite movies when I was a teenager was called Back to the Future. And in this movie, a high school senior named Marty McFly had a time machine that was built by Doc Brown and he was able to travel back in time and forward in time. He went back to 1955, he went to 1855, to 1985, to 2015. Great Scott! Great Scott! There was another movie where this guy would wake up and live the same day over and over again every single day. So like, for example, let's say it was Thursday. He would live his day, he'd go to bed, he'd wake up the next morning, and it would be Thursday all over again. And he would live the exact same day, and he'd go to bed, and he'd wake up the next morning, and it would be Thursday all over again. And he would live the exact same day. You guys get the picture. But that's not how time works. We can't pause time, rewind, fast forward, do over, go back in time, go forward in time. Time does not work that way. We do not have control over time. The only one who has control over time is the creator of time, and that is God. And the first three words in the Bible tell us that time had a beginning, and it was God who created it. In the beginning. Let's keep going. In the beginning, God. You see, God existed before time. He was the only one who existed before the beginning. It's hard for me to get my mind around that because there was nothing. And I don't know what nothing looks like because I've never seen nothing. I think darkness is something. I think space is something. But there was nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Until God began creating. Now, some translations of the Bible translate the first part of Genesis 1-1, not in the beginning, God created, but when God began creating. And I have a problem with that because that implies that time always existed and chaos always existed. And at some point in time, God decided to just start organizing the chaos. If that were the case, then time and chaos would be co-eternal with God. That would make God less God, and that would elevate time and chaos to a level of coexistence with God. But the Bible teaches that God only coexisted eternally as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. God coexisted eternally with himself and no one and nothing else. The pagan religions are not right. God is the only eternal being that ever existed. And this God is the one who created everything. In the beginning, God. God had no beginning. God always existed. And God's the one that did all the creating. Let's move on. In the beginning, God created. So understand this. God always existed. And then God created time. And then time measured the rest of his creative acts. And verse 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is like bookends. It's like the bookends in my office. And it's like, if I'm going to say I read all the books on my bookshelf, I'd say, from Terry to Brutus, I read them all. They're the bookends. From here to here, I read them all. And the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So in other words, from way up there to way down here and everything in between, they're the bookends. In other words, God created everything. And here's the order the Bible gives us that he created everything. And I'm going to teach it to you now. And I'd like you to learn it along with me because that's going to be this week's extra extra. On day one, God created light. Go like this with your finger. One finger. That'll help us remember. And then we're doing sign language for light. This is sign language for light. On day one, God created light. Did you know that light is electromagnetic radiation that is perceived by our eyes? Did you know that light is so fast it moves around 186,000 miles per second? That means that light can go around the earth seven times in one second. That means that light can go from here to the moon or from the moon to here in 1.255 seconds. 
Light is incredible. Sir Isaac Newton studied light as it hit a prism and saw the different colors of light and realized that these are different wavelengths. Light is complex and it is amazing and it is really fast. And on day one, God created light. On day two, God created sky. Say that with me. On day two, God created sky. We're using two fingers here. We're going to switch them. So from here to here, and then like this, like you're making sky separating from the ground. On day two, God created sky because God created this, this, and this. On day two, God created sky. On day three, hold up three fingers, God created land, sea, and green stuff. I'll say that again. Land, sea, and and green stuff. What I mean by green stuff isn't like green crayons or green socks. I mean like plants, vegetables, flowers, grass, trees, vines, land, sea, and green stuff. Did you know there are around 391,000 species of plants? God created plants on day three. So here we go. Day one, God made light. Day two, God made sky. Day three, God made land, sea, and green stuff. On day four, hold up four fingers like this and paint it across the sky, over your head. On day four, God made sun, moon, stars, and galaxies. That's four things. We're using four fingers and we're painting them above our head as if you're looking at all the stars and all the sun, the moon and all of that that God had made. Day four, God made sun, moon, stars, and galaxies. There are more stars than we can even count. There are more galaxies than we even know about. The closest star to us is the sun, and that is 91 million miles away, and it burns at a temperature of around 27 million degrees, and God created it. Think about just our solar system. Our solar system has arguably nine planets. You heard about Pluto? That's messed up. Over 500,000 asteroids, around 181 moons, over 3,000 comets, and it's over 11 trillion miles in diameter, and we're just talking about our solar system here. Imagine the entire universe. On day four, God made sun, moon, stars, and galaxies. So say them with me. On day one, God made light. On day two, God made sky. On day three, God made land, sea, and green stuff. On day four, God made sun, moon, stars, and galaxies. Five is really easy. Hold up five fingers like this and then put your fingers together. On day five, God made fish, like you're doing the fin of a fish swimming. On day five, God made fish and birds. So you're gonna flap with five fingers. You're gonna fin with five fingers and flap with five fingers. On day five, God made fish and birds. Think fins and flap. Five fins and flap. Fish and birds. Did you know that there's around 10,000 species of birds in the world? Did you know there are over 20,000 species of fish in the world and we have only explored 5% of the ocean? And God made the birds and the fish on day five. Let's say them all together. Here we go. Day one, God made light. Day two, God made sky. Day three, God made land, sea, and green stuff. Day four, God made sun, moon, stars, and galaxies. Day five, God made fish and birds. Now we come to something special. Day six, God made animals and people. So you have six fingers up. With one hand, with the five, you're going to put it up here like moose antlers or something. And then six, you're going to point to yourself. So on day six, God made animals and God made people. Let's say it together. God made animals and God made people. Did you know there's between one and two million different species of animals on the earth? And God made them on day six. But do you know how many species of humans there are? Just one. Here's why. God made humans special. The Bible says we are made in the image of God. God created us to have a relationship with him. That's not said about fish. That's not said about insects. That's not said about birds. That's not said about giraffes. As far as the physical creatures on this earth, only humans are made to be in a relationship with him. And the only way to have a relationship with this awesome, incredible, creative, 
brilliant, beautiful, generous, loving God is by repenting and believing on Jesus. Have you ever been brought into a relationship with God? Have you ever repented and believed on Jesus? So here we go. Say him with me. On day one, God made light. Day two, God made sky. Day three, God made land, sea, and green stuff. Day four, God made sun, moon, stars, galaxy. Day five, God made fish and birds. Day six, God made animals and people. Now, God finished creating then. So on day seven, God rested. Hold up seven fingers like this. On day seven, God rested. Now, you have to know this. It's not because God was so exhausted, like, I'm going to keep creating and I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a, oh, I'm too tired. I need to rest. That's not what happened. God finished creating. And so he was done. So he just rested. In other words, he just stopped creating. So on day seven, God rested. And Genesis 1 and 2 tells us how God created everything. Now let's ask ourselves, because we learned last week the basic story of the Bible. Do you remember that? God made it. We ruined it. Jesus rescues it. God will restore it. Where does what we just learned in Genesis 1 and 2 fit in the basic story of the Bible? You guessed it, God made it. And the Bible says, and it was very good. Also, don't forget, the whole Bible is like an arrow that points to Jesus. Now, how does Genesis 1 point us to Jesus? Well, I'm glad you asked. For that, we're going to turn to a book that was written around 1600 years after the book of Genesis was written and that is the book of John. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Whoa, there's a lot going on there. First, the first three words in Genesis 1.1 1, 1 are in the beginning. The first three words in John 1.1 1, 1 are in the beginning. Second, Mr. Forrest, I thought God was the only one who was in the beginning. But in John 1, 1, it says that the word, capital W, was in the beginning with God and was God. Furthermore, verse 14 says the word became flesh, in other words, became human and lived among us. So wait a second here. Who was with God as God and became human and lived among us? The answer? the person John was writing about, and that is Jesus. And John says that Jesus made everything. But Moses said in Genesis 1-1 that God made everything. How is this possible? Jesus is God. And guys, the whole Bible is like one big arrow that points to Jesus. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Know Your Bible, Know Your God. This week, our memory verse is Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you guys remember our extra extra from last week? Don't forget it. It's the basic story of the Bible. God made it. We ruined it. Jesus rescues it. God will restore it. Our extra extra this week is the seven days of creation, what God made on each day. Now, I went over it in the video, so watch it again if you need to, but also I put it in the description below. So don't forget this week, memorize your verse, do your extra, extra, and do your books of the Bible. And we're our five books of the Bible are still this week, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We're going to start adding to those starting next week. So say all that to your parents, have them email me, and I'll record it. And you guys, after six weeks, can get a prize. I'll send it to you. Or if you're local, you can just come here to Calvary Sunday nights at 6 o'clock. And I will see you guys next week. But until then, Mr. Forrest, out. <laughs>